Large language models are here to stay in software development. They're in increasing use with the number of code assist tools growing rapidly. How much do they really help though? This isn't a simple question to answer, and I'm hearing both that they help a lot and that they don't help at all, and in fact, slow down development, depending on the source and who you listen to, or maybe perhaps depending on how they are used. So where are we with large language models and do they really help or are they just another fad in software development? Hi, I'm Dave Farley of Continuous Delivery. Welcome to my channel. If you haven't been here before, please do hit subscribe. And if you enjoy the content today, hit like as well. I'm a believer in artificial intelligence in the sense that I'm pretty certain that there aren't any technical barriers to achieving full-blown, as good as or better than a human at everything, levels of performance one day. When that day will happen, and whether it's a good thing or a bad thing, we may not know, but at least in terms of timing, it's probably sooner than we think. But I guess it's almost certainly within the lifetimes of most people watching this today. That's both fascinating and scary. But one thing is certain, we aren't there yet, but even before we get to that point, AI is already at a level that is disruptive, and that disruption is only going to continue to accelerate. I've talked about some of that before, but today I want to focus more specifically on the use of artificial intelligence to help us to write code. The current generation of large language models took many people by surprise, and the pace of change, even after some of the recent overhyped stuff around AI has died down a bit, is still staggeringly fast. But it's also pretty clear that we aren't at the level of artificial general intelligence yet. The current generation of code assistants are superhuman and dumb at the same time. They're superhuman in terms of things like speed and memory, and sometimes laughably naive in terms of the code that they produce. That's because they lack something important, vital even, that is deep at the roots of software development. And in my opinion, until they reach the levels of artificial general intelligence, where they are at least as smart as a human at pretty much everything, they will continue to lack that vital component. But to be honest, there are some human programmers that seem to lack it too. But before I explain what I mean, let me thank our sponsors. We're fortunate to be sponsored by Equal Experts, Tricentis and Transfic. All of these companies offer products and services that are very well aligned with the topics that we discuss on this channel every week. So if you're looking for excellence in continuous delivery and software engineering, do click on the links in the description below and check out our sponsors. The missing component that I was talking about is that there's a lot more to software development, even to computer programming, than just being able to create syntactically correct computer code. This was never enough. I know that there are some dysfunctional organizations that attempt to treat software developers as some kind of code monkeys or other, but these aren't the places where real, let alone first-class development happens. It takes a lot more than only the ability to sign a variable structure a for loop or process a stream. If you're a regular viewer of this channel, you will have heard me say many times before that we aren't employed as professional programmers to write code. We're employed to solve problems. The code is the tool that we generally use to solve them. So whether the code is written by a large language model or a junior developer who's been micromanaged and told exactly how to solve a problem, the ability to translate detailed instructions of, of a solution into code isn't the difficult part. To treat it as such is to fall into the trap of assuming that no or low code is the correct answer to all problems. In this model, AI is seen as the, I suppose, the ultimate no code solution. We tell the AI what to do and it writes the code. One of the problems that I have with this approach is, what does telling the AI what to do mean if it's not a form of coding? 
The way that some companies and some people are talking about large language models generating code, it seems to me to be falling into the same trap as the low and no coders. The inbuilt assumption here is that the bottlenecks for software development is somewhere in the typing. I don't think that's true at all. Their conclusion is that if only we can reduce the amount of typing involved in all this coding, it will save lots of money and that will otherwise be wasted on programmers. Or to put it more generously, perhaps, that we'll be able to create more software with the same number of programmers. The problem is that this is a huge misread of what software development really is all about and what it takes to be skilled at software development. It's not being able to type faster. Yes, all of us can get hung up on syntax from time to time, or on understanding the programming model of some framework or tool, and large language models can be remarkably helpful at answering some, or helping us at least, with some of those questions. How do I code this bit kind of questions? I've been using GitHub Copilot for this. And I like the way it suggests things. In this mode, it's more like a kind of smarter autocomplete than something that does all of the work for me. I don't feel any loss of control when it's working that way. Sometimes it recommends the wrong things, but it's pretty easy to ignore those recommendations when I want to. So far in my somewhat limited use of Copilot, I've liked the fact that it has kept its advice pretty narrowly focused. It's not aiming to advise large blocks of code when it's working like this or when I'm working like this, but is rather just suggesting what might usefully come next. And often, that was what I was about to type anyway, so it does save me some typing. I've heard lots of people call this a kind of automated pair programming. I wouldn't quite go that far, but I can see what they mean. It does remind me of some aspects of pair programming that I like. The fairly unobtrusive nudge to remind or recommend what comes next when I pause and am obviously stuck. I assume that this is what people who report significant productivity gains really mean. I don't write code for a living full time anymore. I write code mostly for fun or to support my work and demonstrate ideas. That's not the same thing. So I can't claim to have seen huge productivity gains from this so far. But I do value the assistance and I think it does add something to my productivity. If you'd like to learn more about some of the other things that I think add a lot to your productivity, check out my new free how-to guide on the habits of great programmers. There's a link in the description below to that. There's a common joke. Modern software development is mostly about looking up the answer on Stack Overflow and pasting it into production code. Okay, it's not a very funny joke, I admit, but I do think that the internet, Stack Overflow, and similar sites, as well as open source, changed things profoundly. We got access to a lot more code and a lot more experience. Perhaps even more importantly, given how much code was out there to share now, we also got help in being able to find the code that was most interesting to us. I think that in the co-pilot mode of operation, large language models are solving much the same problem. This is essentially very smart search for relevant stuff that happens as we type. That fits rather nicely with an interesting idea that I came across recently that describes large language models uh, and what they do as the same thing as lossy image com compression. Given an input set of data, they retain the overall content, the sense of the picture, if you like, um, but they don't keep a perfect copy. And they do this by keeping a kind of fuzzy copy of examples from their training set, rather like the, the, the lossy image compression does. Enough, at least, to recreate close approximations of the examples that they were trained with based on the context as far as they understand it. This may sound a bit esoteric, and it may be, but that seems relevant to me in how large language models deal with code. If you ask for something boilerplate common where there are going to have been thousands of examples in the training data, you'll probably get a pretty accurate representation. 
Try asking your favorite code generation AI to solve FizzBuzz, and it will offer you a variety of decent options with little or actually no explanation at all on your part. Ask it something a little bit more esoteric though, and it will need more information. It will prompt you with suggestions, even for the descriptions that you're writing of the code that you want. Remember, it's always only guessing what word comes next statistically, based on its training data, whether its suggestion is for the description in English or the code itself, in this case in Java. What I'm really doing here though, is surely programming. I'm just programming in English, a kind of English pseudocode. And if you watch me trying to get the result that I want, I'm struggling and retrying different approaches in a very similar way to what I would if I was writing this in, in a programming language. In this case, trying to direct the solution generated by the AI in the direction that I would like it to go. The trouble is that any human language has a vastly richer syntax and at the same time is vastly less precise as a result than a programming language is. So if I do have a solution in mind, it may be quicker for me and more accurate to simply write it in code in a programming language rather than try and describe it in a human language to the AI and then get it to write the code. So if I can spot the point at which to switch from the AI helping me and giving some suggestions um, and switch from an English description to Java, a Java description, then my AI pair may be helping me do some of the work for me. Here's the syntax that you want. But I can imagine it would be very easy to assume that it's the job of the AI to write the code and I spend then way too long trying to engineer some kind of prompt to write the code that I really want. And then it will take me longer. There's one more thing that I think it's easy to miss with current generations of large language model code assistants. That's the incrementalism of real world software development. Rather like low and no code solutions, AI doesn't do a great job of building up a system step by step. It also ignores several of the requirements in this example that I mentioned in my description and gets others completely wrong. So it's not doing what I asked it to do. And in this example, it also adds a bug, a mistake that I probably wouldn't have made. In this case, where I wanted an average of the last two runs out of three and discard the results of the first run, calculated for me. And now what it's done is it's taken all three runs and it's only divided by two. So I've got an average that is meaningless in terms of the results. If I was working on something a lot more complex than this simple performance test runner, how easy would it have been to spot mistakes like these? Particularly as I don't have a test that tells me what I'm trying to achieve and the results that the AI or I generated isn't really specified other than in, the, in terms of this cycle of a woolly description in English and the AI generated nonsense code. My impression is that both groups of people that claim that AI is a big help and AI is not a big help are probably right. My guess is that um, if you are the, using it as this kind of smarter kind of search, a smart helper, um, then it's quite, it, it's quite quick. But if you are relying on the AI to, AI to generate the code on your behalf, that's probably going to be slower than just writing the code. The other thing that was very noticeable to me was that when I was using the AI, I spent less time thinking about the code compared to the time when I spent typing. I tended to just read it cursorily and say, well, that looks about right, and then move on. And that wasn't good enough because it was writing bugs. But when I took over and I was in charge of writing the code, I slowed down and thought more. I, now spending more time thinking and actually less time typing. And that's a, certainly a facet of the way that I write code in general. I'm happy to think for a little while and then what the code that I type will be simple. Thinking is the hard, time-consuming part in software development. And that's true whether you write the code or you get an AI to do it for you. 
Thank you for watching. And if you enjoy our stuff here on the Continuous Delivery channel, please do consider supporting our work by joining our Patreon community. Thank you and bye-bye.